Hello and welcome. This is Business Incorporated coming to you live from Lagos, Nigeria. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago. On the show today, Congo may more than double tax on critical global cobalt supply. Algeria bans imports of cell phones, veg and other goods to curb trade deficit. Plus, Egypt urban inflation rate drops as currency float shock eases. We start off with the show with the markets and here on the African continent, the Nigerian stock market is blowing really hot as optimism remained high ahead of the corporate earnings season. At intraday, the index was at 41,000 mark, up 2.47%, thanks to gains made by Dangote Cement, Nigerian Breweries, and Wapco. The market in Egypt was also up 0.28%. However, South African JSC index was in the red, down 0.21%, but Nairobi closed in the positive on Tuesday. In the Middle East stock markets, we are mixed at intraday with Qatar continuing to rebound on the back of buying by uh, foreign investors seeking attractive dividend yields. The Qatari index was up 0.51% after uh, real estate firm United Development, the most heavily traded stock, gained 4.6%. The exchange's data shows strong net buying interest in Qatari stocks among foreign investors who accounted for 44.3% of buy orders and 22.8% of sell orders on Tuesday. In Saudi Arabia, the index edged up 0.03% on the back of petrochemical shares, which were boosted by Brent crude oil hitting a two-and-a-half-year high of $69.29 a barrel overnight. Dubai's index was down 0.12%. Union Properties was flat in active trade after saying it was in the final stage of selling its entire stake in Emicool, a district cooling service provider. In Abu Dhabi, the index fell 0.29% as First Abu Dhabi Bank, the biggest lender, retreated 0.5% in heavy trade after jumping 7.3% in the previous six trading days. In Europe, equities were lower in morning trade as investors monitored corporate earnings and fresh data. Let's bring in Daniel Cook now for more from the European space. Good afternoon, Daniel. Thank you very much for joining us today. I hope you're having a good day. Yeah, very good day uh, to you also, Chimmy. Yeah, I'm just uh, doing fine. It's again a very busy day here at the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. It's also busy here. Anyway, it's midweek, so it's bound to be busy. Well, let's get started now. An alliance of Renault, Nissan, Mitsubishi automakers is creating one of the largest venture capital funds dedicated to automotive technologies. That's a princely $1 billion over five years. Is this development being considered an industry game changer? Yeah, many investors are actually calling it a game changer and also are saying that this could be really a model for uh, the future. Because what is clear, car makers worldwide really have to think about their business plans, also how the future is going to look like. Because when we are just talking about the situation at the moment, e-mobility, of course, is going to be the number one in the future. But car makers worldwide, I guess just beside Tesla, still have a very hard time in order to produce products that are interesting for uh, the price uh, for consumers that are interesting also when you talk about the range so this joint venture really seems to make sense big car makers putting lots of money uh, together uh, we are hearing that this is going to be an amount of uh, at least you mentioned it 1 billion over 10 years so yeah investors are very much appreciating this uh, because they there really needs to be so more done. I mentioned the immobility, e also at autonomous driving and uh, startups. Uh, have really proven in the past in many cases to have better ideas than uh, the companies uh, themselves. So yeah, a very interesting uh, news that really could be a game changer for the future. Now, Daniel, while those automakers are busy forming some kind of alliances there, German tire maker Continental is going through the biggest reform in the history of the company. What's exactly happening? 
yeah, it could be the biggest change inside of the company that has been really happening in the history of the company. We are hearing that Continental, also very famous for producing tires here, is thinking about creating a holding inside of the company and bringing this holding as a separate stock listing to the stock exchange. We have seen something similar already happening here with the medical giant Fresenius. Fresenius is also listed with two companies here at the Blue Chip Index. DAX, Fresenius and also Fresenius Medical Care. Something like that now could be also happening with uh, Continental. Investors are telling me that this actually could make lots of sense because first it would bring lots of money in the pocket of Continental and it would really uh, be a good movement in order to be also very strong and solid in uh, the future. All of this has not yet been confirmed by the company. Continental will also have to get the approval of a family Schaeffler, a huge industrial family here in Germany, which is owning 45% of the company. Investors in general are loving this news. When it was breaking for the first time yesterday, uh, shares of Continental were the strongest performer here in the blue chip index DAX, which quite remarkable because we have to remember that by a time Continental was not anymore listed in the Blue Chip Index DAX. Blue Chip Index DAX consists of the 30 strong companies here in Germany. It entered again last year. Now yesterday was the strongest performer. Today's uh, shares are a little bit dropping again but there's just a simple reason beside that investors seem to do some profit taking today. All right, let's um Take a pause and look at um, a bit of what transpired at the China's uh, visit by French President Macron. Well, Macron's mega deal with Airbus. How much do we know and what is France looking to achieve with this deal? Well, President Emmanuel Macron is in China right now and whenever a president is traveling, it's not just about politics, it's of course also about business, doing big business. Well, he is uh, traveling with a big uh, delegation of about uh, 50 uh, different uh, companies with him, also the CEO of Airbus. And we are learning that apparently Airbus was able to sign a mega deal with 12 big Chinese uh, carriers. They are very interested in the Airbus 321, which is a mid-range airplane that was just recently introduced with a new engines. This deal could be worth more than 15 billion euros but in general companies airlines are receiving a big discounts whenever an airline is ordering a large number of planes also very interesting comments that were made by President Emmanuel Macron during his visit in China he has been saying and being very clear to China that China needs to open their doors more for foreign investments because this always always has to go in two directions because if this is not going to be the case he said that uh, also Europe could be in the future more close when it comes to do trade with China. Well, that's a great deal there if they get it sailed through. Thank you very much for your time, uh, Daniel.